This is kind of embarrassing, but with the horse pack coming out, I genuinely can't think about anything else right now. It's gotten so bad that I have resorted to building fake horse ranches and farms and stuff in preparation for the horse pack. So even though I don't have horses, I'm making these half-built ranches so when I do get them, I'm ready to play with them. But I did build one complete farm channeling horse ranch just without horse ranch. So you'd think that I would build this in Henford on Bagley, the cottage living world, given that is literally a farm pack and this is a farmhouse. But I actually am building it in Brindleton Bay. This is the 30 by 30 lot that Brent and Brandt Hecking usually live on. There's actually some fields in the background kind of to the right of the lot that look like farmland. So I felt like this lot was a kind of suitable place to try this, especially because I don't usually build stuff like this outside of Henford on Bagley. And the style of this build is a little bit different than what I normally go for. So I tried to make a sort of classic looking, almost American style farmhouse, but then I decorated it with a lot of cottage living things like the windows and the walls. And instead of the classic white trim that I usually go for. I did a lot more wood accents on this. This is again one of those trust the process kind of builds because I think in the beginning you're like, Kayla, why are you picking green columns? Kayla, what are you doing? But I swear it comes together, okay? I promise it's all gonna work out. And I tried to lay out this lot in a way that would be very useful if you were actually playing with the farm stuff. So I scooted the house way to the front corner of the lot and then in the rest of the areas we have a big farmland with like places for plants. There's a big area for cows and chickens and there's also a pond with a floating building kind of on top of it that I turned into a guest house. I was sort of picturing that maybe grandma lives in there. So this house and the lot aren't very big, but honestly, you could fit a lot of sims here. And then if you count the cows and chickens, you could have a lot of stuff going on on this fairly small lot. Although I will say that there is not enough room for horses here. When the horse pack comes out, we're gonna have to build something new because I did not leave any free space here. I think now is probably a good time for me to remind you to trust the process because as I'm picking this roof color and then I decided to use the mossy one from the werewolves pack, this is where I think a lot of my Twitch chat was like, oh no, <laughs> this is going downhill. But the thing is, I have never used this brown and green window swatch and I never ever used that werewolves roof with the green moss on it. And so I thought, you know what? Let's try it. Let's see if we can make it work. So it it is rather alarming on first glance, but I think once all the landscaping's in and all of the plants are here, and stuff, it does start to look better. Just just give it a second, okay? Because <laughs> I, I know right now it's like, whoa, Kayla, that's a lot, but I swear it, it's gonna work. But while I'm finishing up some exterior details, let's talk about horse ranch for a second. So hypothetically, the pack comes out on Thursday, so it's really not far away. It's only a couple days away. So obviously, as soon as it comes out, I'm gonna post like a million videos playing with horses. I'm also planning on streaming a lot with horses. So if you wanna watch some more Sims content, my Twitch channel is just Lil Simsy. I stream every single day on Twitch and we always have a lot of fun, especially around these new releases. Cause I can make a 20 minute video about horses, but I'm also gonna make like a four hour stream about horses. So if you're into that, check me out over there. And I don't really know how much I should say on this subject, but you know how usually when expansion packs come out, I get early access to them. Yeah, so hypothetically, if I were to have early access right now, I would be hypothetically making a lot of videos with my early access to post next week before the horse pack comes out. And I'm also gonna be showing off a bunch of early access footage on Twitch. I mean, hy hypothetically, if I were to have early access, that's what I would do. Does that make sense? So <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, I, I think that um, maybe you should follow my Twitch channel now and also make sure you're subscribed because next week there's gonna be a lot of fun videos coming out. Are, do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Is this, are, are we on the same page? And I also wanted to ask you all, because I'm gonna be making a review video on the horse pack, if there's any pressing questions or specifically pressing concerns or maybe anything you want to see that the Sims team didn't show off in their live stream, could you please comment that down below? Because obviously I've got a lot of ideas of my own and a lot of things that I'm planning on including, but there might be a couple little random things that maybe I forgot about or I, you know, stuff that you want to see that I didn't think that you would. So this video's comments are a good place to ask those questions or to tell me about those things. I'm obviously not allowed to talk about it too much yet, but I will be allowed 
to talk about it next week, and I'm planning on recording that review video tomorrow, so tell me now. But with that being said, and that out of the way, you can see we've made a lot of progress on this house. I'm kind of going through and trying to figure out the layout now. Whenever I do these big farms, I always try and do a lot of terrain paint to help fill in the big empty grass spaces, and it helps to be able to like divide up the area. So I always think, okay, the house is gonna go here, the pond's gonna go here. There's almost like four quarters of this lot that all have a different section to them. So you can see all those different pieces I was talking about with the farm and then the barn and then that pond with the guest house on top of it. This house has a lot of space for crops. I'm not really sure how easy it would be to manage a field that big. This is the thing, when you play with farms and stuff from Cottage Living, it is a full-time job to try and take care of all those animals. So when I think about that and then I think about what it would be like with horses as well, because if individually running a cottage living farm takes like a full sim day, but then also running a horse ranch takes a full sim day, how are you supposed to do both? And this is the thing, if I hypothetically had early access right now, I would only have access to the base game and the horse pack together. I wouldn't have like other packs in that version of the game. So I wouldn't be able to test out what horse ranch is like with cats and dogs or what horse ranch is like with cottage living. We have to wait till it actually releases to find that out. So I am so curious what it's gonna be like to try and have horses and goats and sheep and cows and chickens and like all of these things. I'm so excited. <laughs> I My favorite thing to do in The Sims is farm. I don't really do it that often in my content, but if any of you watch my Twitch streams, you'll know that I have been obsessed with a game called Stardew Valley for years and years and years now. It's a farming game. It's one of my favorite games literally of all time ever. So any game that has farming mechanics, things like Stardew Valley, even when Animal Crossing got that little mini, like basically gardening update, I was thriving, okay? I love this kind of thing. So I am so excited for them to expand upon it with the horses. That's part of why I keep trying to make all these farms in preparation. Like I'm building all of these things because it's all I can think about right now. And seeing things like this giant field for the crops is making me want to build vineyards for the new nectar making skill and stuff. I'm just, I'm so excited. I love this kind of thing. Watching this back is reminding me just how long it took me to landscape, by the way. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm going back and forth. I'm putting so many different debug plants around here. I think I even cut some of the landscaping out just because of how long it took me to place everything. I'm a little bit late to talking about this because I'm moving back inside now, but I get asked for tips on landscaping a lot. So I figured now is a good time for me to kind of walk you through my process of how and why I do what I do when I landscape. Usually when I'm placing plants, I think about layering a lot, right? So I like to have low lying plants in the front and then bigger plants in the back. And oftentimes what I'll do is put a big bush in the back, have a couple few flowers, maybe some other bushes in the middle and then some lower things in the front of them. I feel like that's what helps to make it look the fullest whenever I'm trying to place these plants down. And I also usually when putting plants, try to pick a color scheme. I feel like sometimes it looks a little bit busy when I put a lot of different colors of plants all at once, which actually does work for certain styles of builds. But most of the time I'll decide, okay, I'm gonna do all pink flowers on this house. And I'll use different types of flowers, but they're usually all the same color of pink. And then in this case, all of the flowers are kind of like that yellowy orange color. And I use that same color everywhere. There's two different types of flowers that I'm using, but they're all the same color scheme, which I think helps it look a little bit more cohesive. Obviously, you don't have to do that when you're building. That's just what I think looks best when I'm building, so that's kind of how I try to do it. But we all have different styles and preferences and stuff. It's just in case you were curious about my thought process, that's why I do it that way. But now we're actually inside. I figured out the floor plan and I'm trying to go through and furnish everything. So a lot of times in these sort of older style houses, I like to do more closed off floor plans with small rooms and little hallways. So in this case, I have kind of a long entry hallway where the staircase is. And then to the right of that, I put an office and a bathroom. In that office, I put a nice like big wall of built-in bookshelves. There's a fancy desk. I think in general on this house, I was kind of trying to furnish it a little bit fancy. I was sort of thinking like grandma's house or at least an older family home. So I pictured a lot of antiques being in here, stuff that like maybe got passed down. It used to belong to great grandma and now I have her piano. We've got grandpa's old old leather desk chair, stuff like that. You can kind of already see here, but on this house, I used a lot of blues and greens on the inside. I know, I know, I have a problem. Everything's always blue. But in my defense, I used a lot of green accents outside, okay? There's the green windows, the green fence. So I tried to use a lot of green inside to match that. We've got the green curtains and this little office. And then in the kitchen, I also used some green cabinets. You know what? I gotta say, 
I really like those cabinets from the Cottage Living Pack. They've got some really nice pastel colors on them, like that really light colored green with the wooden countertop I think is so cute. We are starting to be in desperate need of some new kitchen selections though. I feel like I have this conversation every time I make a build in The Sims, but I just, I need more swatches so bad. We need another swatch update. They did an update to some of the base game counters a while ago and they added some new swatches to them, but we so badly need some more. <laughs> I just, I built so much. I swear to you, I have used every swatch of cabinet in this game. And obviously some I like better than others, so I end up using those swatches more often and I just, we need more. <laughs> every time they do a swatch update, it's so good. We've gotten like a couple swatch updates now. They did a huge one for windows and stuff. They did one for some of the bathroom things recently. We got that like wood swatch update where they went back and updated some of the base game wood and things like the bookshelves and the coffee tables and stuff. But oh my goodness, another swatch update would go so far. I shouldn't complain though, because actually I, I do like the swatches that I used in this house. <laughs> it's more of a base game problem. I want to have more base game swatches. You know what? I will complain for a second about swatches though, because actually the amount of different wood swatches in here is horrendous. <laughs> it's actually really bad. I can point out a couple that are going to really bug you if you haven't seen them already. So on the edge of the staircase, I put a column and the lighting is bugged on that column. Despite all of my attempts to try to fix it, I couldn't make it work. So that column is the same color as all the other columns. It just doesn't look like it because the lighting is glitched. So it looks a lot darker and like almost kind of shadowy. So that's annoying. And then because I was using cottage living columns, we have like a sort of different wood color on those columns than we do on all the windows. The front door is different. And the base game has no matching swatch to that cottage living wood tone. So the archway into the living room is also a different color. So there's just a million different shades of wood happening in this house. I know I always talk about mismatching wood swatches like it's a huge problem when in real life, obviously things don't always match. Like all the wood tones aren't identical in real life either. It's just, there's something about them being this close to being right and then not being the same that really bugs me. <laughs> it's also kind of annoying when they give us like, like maybe a new, let's say fireplace. And that fireplace has four different wood swatches and they're all like random wood swatches that don't match anything else in the entire game. And it's like, well, why did why did you do that? At that point, if there's just gonna be four, at least make them match something. You know, I wanna have it look similar to something. But I realize that's quite dramatic because again, obviously in real life, this does not happen, especially in an older house like this. I think it makes sense that there would be some random things happening. There'd be some weird little little bits to it. We can pretend that maybe over the years they got a new archway and they couldn't match the stain and that's why it doesn't match. <laughs> Except, um, on it, well, honestly, it's the same thing here, because in, in The Sims 4, we got a base game swatch, and then we couldn't match the stain. Eight years later, we got Cottage Living, and it's a different color. <laughs> I usually use these speed builds kind of like podcasty, almost. I just talk and talk and talk and talk, but I actually have a kind of embarrassing story for you that I kind of want to tell you about. This is almost like thinly veiled stream promotion as well, but that's not my intention, okay? But but basically, on my Twitch streams, a lot of times I have a cat cam on my stream. I have this chair behind me in my office. You can actually probably see the webcam sitting right there behind me. But whenever my cat sits there and I'm streaming, I just turn the webcam on. And then I have like my face cam and also my cat's camera. I don't know. It's cute. She sleeps. We all watch her. I'm like building in The Sims and there's a cat on the screen. It's, it's nice vibes, okay? Well, yesterday I wasn't streaming, but she was sitting there and I was just sitting at my desk, like eating breakfast and stuff, getting ready. And so I thought, you know, maybe I'll just film it because she sat there. I've got the camera up like I can just press record. So I filmed like an hour of my cat sleeping on the chair. Okay, using my same cameras I always use. And then later in the day, I went live on Twitch like I always do. And my cat wasn't sitting on the chair. She was actually sitting on my desk right here, like laying across my desk. And I was joking about how I had this video. So I decided to put the cat cam video that I had on my stream as if like, you know, it was a live camera, even though it wasn't. And it was funny because she would like stand up and her face would be in front of mine, but then there's also a camera of her. So it looks like there's two of her. Anyway, the part of this that's funny is I filmed this video of my cat, right? And I put it on my stream. Well, 
I didn't mute the audio. Like I was filming my own microphone when I was recording this video of my cat. Kind of forgot about it. And then I just put it on my stream without thinking about like what was in the audio, right? Well, all of a sudden I'm I'm just playing Sims and my chat's like, what's that weird crunching? What What is that? Why do I hear this weird crunching? And I was sat here like, well, my Sims aren't eating. So that's weird. What kind of crunching do you hear? And then I realized the crunching was me eating cereal because I had like, filmed my cat and my own microphone without thinking. And so the crunching was from me eating cereal in the morning. But like, obviously my stream didn't know that. No one in chat knew that. So they just hear this weird like ghost crunching and they're like, what is that? Well, I couldn't hear it because it was just playing for the stream. Oh my God. So I had to go and try and mute it. In the process of trying to mute the ghost crunching, I muted my own microphone, my live microphone. So they couldn't hear me, but they could only hear the crunching. It was a... It was a whole thing. It was so embarrassing. Anyway, I'm like actually embarrassed by that, I think. <laughs> I'm too embarrassed to go back and listen to it to like hear how embarrassing the crunching was. I almost don't wanna know. But yeah, sorry if you were there and all of a sudden you heard this random scary ghost crunching in the middle of the stream. That is the problem with live content. Stuff goes wrong, you know? At least on YouTube, I could cut that out. You would never know what happened unless I, you know, made a video like this and told you about it. But when it's live, it's, um. It's all extremely chaotic, <laughs> but we're almost done with the build now. I'm kind of going through and furnishing the last little bits of the bedrooms. So upstairs, there's a few bedrooms. I think there's three bedrooms upstairs. Honestly, I was talking about cereal too much. I don't remember, <laughs> but I'm doing some last little details here. And then we're going to jump back into the game and I'll show you a tour of the full building. There's actually a lot to see on this lot. So I want to go through and point out some stuff to you. So like I was saying, I built this in Brindleton Bay up here in this top corner where the Heckings live in all of my years playing this game I had literally never noticed before but look at over here right next to their lot it's like actual farmland next to them so it was perfect for building this the weather unfortunately is not perfect for building this the lighting on this lot is terrible so let me try and fix it really quickly so I could show you on the gallery it's called get out of my swamp and to be honest I don't remember why I did that I guess it's kind of swamp like <laughs> This is my swamp farmhouse. Oh, I can't afford it, hold on. It costs $127,000 and it uses like a million packs. So for that, I apologize. But this is what the finished product looks like. So like I tried to say, I swore once the landscaping got in, it was gonna all make more sense. And the outside really does kind of have swamp vibes, even down to the trees that I used in the back. But in the front, we have this little pathway leading up to the front door. I put this old rusty tractor thing. Around the side, we have this really nice farm area with a cute pumpkin sign. I put like patchy down so he'll help you garden. And then if you come through there, there's some more big pathways and they go around this really lovely pond. In live mode, you don't see those weird boxes, by the way, don't worry. These are actually VFX. So in build mode, there are these weird little squares on the floor, but if you go into live mode and you press play, you'll see some ducks floating around, you'll see some bugs and things like that. So that's what those are. I swear it looks better in live mode than it does in build mode. Back here in the corner, I cut out the furnishing of this because it took me so long, but this is that little guest house I was talking about. It's kind of a weird shape and I put this wheel in it. I had no idea that this wheel from the Cottage Living Debug moves in live mode, which is actually kind of cool. And then inside of it, there's just a little studio style guest house. We have a little bed right here. There's a bathroom, a tiny kitchen, and a little living room. And there's also a really cute screened in porch, which considering how many mosquitoes I put, honestly, it's nice to have. And then around here on this side, this is the little actual farm area. So we have the barn, we have the chickens. In game, you can use this to buy cows and stuff. And I guess once the horse pack comes out, you could probably put like horse stuff over here if you wanted to. I don't really know how much space you'll need, but I assume this would be fine. Wink, wink, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> Cause I obviously haven't seen it myself yet, right? <laughs> anyway, inside the house, <laughs> this is the whole interior. When you walk in, we have this little hallway. I put some shelves around the place and stuff. I also put a piano in the hallway. I don't know how realistic that is, but it was nice for the Sims. It was a good spot for it. To the left, we've got a kitchen. We have a small little breakfast nook in here and some pet bowls. I also put some pet treats on the counter. Back here, we have the little dining room. I love the windows from Cottage Living. I really, really like the latch on them and like the wood panes in the middle. And then through here, we go into the living room. I didn't put a TV in here. A lot of times when I put houses that have fireplaces, I don't put TVs, but I think because this house is supposed to be older, it's okay. They've got a cat tree in the corner and everything. I love this little lighthouse as well. Also downstairs, we've got one small bathroom and we have this really nice office. I put some built-in bookshelves. I love this painting over the 
built-in couch. We also have a globe bar and a desk and everything. Classic little Simsy chess table. And then upstairs, we've got a super tiny hallway and actually four bedrooms, not three. See, I know what I built. I know what my house looks like. But back here, we've got one small kid's room. We've got maybe like a teen room, maybe a guest bedroom here. A little bit less personality because it's kind of small. We have a little tiny infant room with some cribs and everything. And we have the primary bedroom. This primary bedroom actually has a laundry basket because I put some laundry stuff outside that I'll show you. But they have an ensuite bathroom and there's a bigger hall bathroom up here that has space for the litter box. This would probably be quite annoying in game, but I put the laundry stuff out here. This is just a little bit slower than using the washer and dryer. So it might, it might bother you, but I like how it looks. And then on the patio, we've got just some benches. I did put a little easel over here on the side and there's a little grill right behind the house as well, but that is the entire place. Very swampy, but in my opinion, very cute. So if you want to download it, my name is just Lil Simsy on the gallery and it's called Get Out of My Swamp. And if you liked this, I do a lot of build videos like this here on my YouTube channel. So feel free to subscribe so you don't miss them. Obviously we have some really fun horse builds coming very soon. And like I said, I'm going to have my Twitch channel linked down below if you want to watch this stuff live as well. I actually built this live on Twitch first and then I've cut it together into a speed build for you here on YouTube. But on that note, I'm going to go. So thank you for watching. Have the best rest of your day and I'm going to catch you all tomorrow. Okay. Bye everybody. Look, I don't mean to brag, but hypothetically, if I were to have access to the horses pack, I would be going to play it right now after I finish recording this video. So bye, I've got stuff to do.